Okay, hello everyone. We are going to use uh, GeoGebra, and in this case, the Chrome app for GeoGebra, uh, to do some geometric constructions. All right. So uh, very, very similar to the one that you can download and install, but this is the online version. First thing I want to do is go up here and click on that little arrow to see the grid to turn this axis off. All right. Um, I definitely don't want to have the grid on. If I was um, going to construct or make a rectangle using the grid I might be very tempted to do something like this where it snaps to the coordinates of the grid and I might create something that looks like a rectangle but if I go to the move tool here and drag it around it quickly falls apart so that's not really a constructed rectangle and it's of no use to us because we're trying to understand the definitions that make these things what they are so if I go to the extreme right menu pull it down this is the delete object and I can get rid of these things I also don't like these pesky little labels here. Uh, they're just annoying. So after turning off the grid, I'm going to go to Options and turn off those labels, all right? No new objects will be labeled. And I'm also going to give myself a little bit more of a drawing space here and begin by constructing a rectangle. So to start doing that, I'm going to select a segment tool and then just make any old segment here, okay? Um, I need to... Uh, follow the definition of a rectangle which is that all four sides are equal and they're all equal and 90 degrees so I'm going to use the perpendicular tool and by just basically using kind of common sense to be perpendicular you have to tell the computer what point to go through and what line to be perpendicular to and then it will create it okay I'm going to do the same thing down here but just to show you the variety I'm going to click on the parallel tool alright so then I'm going to create that parallel line by clicking on this point and saying what line should I be parallel to well that's this one up here and now I will have the start of my rectangle these will always be right angles I just need to give it a stopping point alright so go to point tool and you'll notice how it turns uh, black or darkened when I'm over it that's smart because the computer knows that I'm supposed to be getting close to that and now to create a perpendicular there I can just select that perpendicular tool, click on the point, and why not just for fun be perpendicular to this one over here, and it'll also work. All right. I'm going to shade it in by using the uh, polygon shading in tool, and I started in the upper left. Notice that there's no point there, but when I snap close enough, it's smart enough to make a point on the intersection of those two objects. I have to tell it to stop by going full circle, and then you'll see the color changes. All right. Well, this is a construction of a rectangle. This is what we want. It's based on the definition of a rectangle. I would like to emphasize its shape, but minimize these construction lines. And you can't just take the erasing tool and erase part of the line. Um, but what I can do is make it less um, obvious. So uh, by selecting it, when it turns dark, you'll notice you get this menu of items up here, off. And then when I select it, they come back. So I'm going to make this dashed, and I'm going to change the color to be very light gray and you'll see then I could change the thickness of the line by this slider here or the, that's really the density of the shaded line by um, doing this nice little trick here where I copy the visual style I choose this tool the first click is the style you want to copy and then it applies it to the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth clicks I could do the same with these sides I could make them thick and then copy that visual style so just to repeat that, I click on it, I make it dark, up it is here. I can make this line by this slider thicker if I want to, and I could change the color if I want to. But what I'm actually going to do is do it all at once um, and save even that copy visual style by simply clicking on the polygon. You'll notice I get the ring here, and then choosing the color that I want for the boundary. Uh, whoops, that's the interior one, I apologize. And there is the shading so this is going to give me the color uh, so I'll make this like a bluish color but then by clicking on the line here I get the density of the line alright and now I've got it so to label this I go under the text tool and click and I'm going to uh, define this I'll say it's a quadrilateral oops I will say it's a rectangle that is um, an equiangular quadrilateral. 
there are, um, you could define it as uh, having four congruent angles, four right angles. There are several good definitions for some of these simple figures. Click OK, and there it is. That's a little bit small. So by selecting that, you'll see up come some options, and I'll maybe make this medium. I could change the color of the text if I wanted to um, to personalize it. All right? So there is your construction of a rectangle. All right? I can make this take any shape I wanted, large or small. I can make it square. I can make it much longer. All right? So uh, that's the basics. I will show you now one more complex figure, but as a way of segueing into that, I would ask you to think about if you were going to make a square and not a rectangle, how you might do that. Well, the simple answer is we use circles in geometry, in construction geometry, to make things equal. By drawing a circle there, you can see that I've measured off an equal distance here to there because they're both radii, and I could create a point and create a perpendicular, and then this would be a square. So I'm going to do that sort of reasoning over here um, to make a rhombus. All right, and a rhombus is four equal sides. So by starting with a circle, okay, there's my circle to start with, and I guess I want you to notice one thing, and that is that on the rectangle here, these three points are all blue. They're not black. Um, the blue ones are points that are somehow able to move, so I can resize it very simply with this. That was the original segment that I drew, and I can resize it with this because that was the line that was floating. But this line is restricted to where this line, this point is. This point here is restricted to being directly perpendicularly below that one. So when I click on this and try to drag it, it will not move. All right. So it's nice to know when you're trying to make things um, large or small which points will resize things, and it's by color. So if I go and draw this first spoke, that's the first side of my rhombus. If I make another spoke, I will get another side to my rhombus. Rhombi have all four sides equal. So now how do I make more sides that are exactly this same length? Well, I'm going to do it with the circle. So under circle here, I'm going to choose this compass tool. And the way the compass tool works is you select the length. And once I select the length, you'll see I've got a fixed circle. The question is, where do I place it? I'm not going to place it up here, but I'm going to place it right there. And now I've got a measurement that's going to be this distance away from that point for my third side. I just need to do it again for this at this one here. And you'll see that point there is now equal distance from the other two points. <coughs> Excuse me. So to shade this in, I can click on this point and work my way around my rhombus back to my starting point. You can see there I've got my shape. So again, I can just copy the visual style to minimize these circles that I want to see, but don't want to have them be distracting. And then I can uh, choose this shape and go through and do all the things I did before where I choose a color. And uh, whoops, I didn't get the full shape there. What did I do wrong? Uh, I was talking and not paying attention to what I'm clicking on. If I click on this object right there, uh, hopefully that will shade it in. Whoop, I've done something wrong here. Um, oh well, um, I'm not going to lose time by doing that, but you can do the same type of uh, adjustments to the, this shape here to make it look all nice. I'm going to make this one last circle minimized. All right, so there are two or three shapes for constructing on GeoGebra. Thanks a lot.